muscles. Rub this in until you look beautiful. I don't know how hard I can rub because it's not going to work. Anyways, a little bit of eye cream. You know, trying to Benjamin Button myself here. I don't know if that's the right comparison. Anyways, I don't know. I've fallen victim to this... Uh, Oh, it's all, almost cliche now, beyond redundant, to find a thing to do in your videos that gets interest in something that's unique, and just for the sake of being unique, because nobody's done it, regardless of how ridiculous it is, and I'm sorry I've fallen victim to what I've been poo-pooing for years, um, but what you gonna do, you know, it's either that or just staring at my face. Anyways, I'm gonna read this, um... Or, and or type it on every video I do because this is all part of my book um, z, and then there'll be multiple of them but because they're not gonna fit in just one novel even though they're, gar they're pretty much the same type of concept anyways I'm gonna read this let me see I might need glasses for this and ironically I need my glasses to find my glasses oh they're right here they actually match my jersey right now so not too bad I'll take it so where were we that's right all right this video including its audio closed caption and or transcripted components is sole property of Richard H. Jones too Mwah. the author CEO of right about now publishing DBA common ground any monetization any monetizations of any form earned as a result of the aforementioned words and or subsequent ideas are to be relinquished to me, the author, with a 10% interest rate compounded daily. 35 cents over 12 years, my students. That's right. How much? Um, what is it? 10% interest rate, 35 cents um, 35 cents is your in initial principal amount. 10% interest rate compounded daily. Okay? Compound interest rate, guys. Uh, going back a little bit to last year. Uh, plug that in. I want to know if somebody makes 35 cents off of this. Um, in 12 years, would I be able to afford, with that money that I'm going to get relinquished to me, a, um, a soda, a shirt, a car, a house, or a, a WNBA team, or an F NFL team? Which of those would be closest to a reasonable answer to the answer to that question? I just wanted to remind people, hey, um, get your own ideas. Mine are up here. I'm putting out to the world as a service, but also to get money. So I want to be compensated for what I create that helps people. So um, however selfish that is, you know, it's not really why I do it, but I wouldn't want someone else to get the money off of my idea. It just, it doesn't feel right in my heart. It never would in any part of it. Um, at any rate, to my students, thank you guys. You've inspired me. To, you really have this year to um, be a better man, a better teacher. And I want to feel like I've always been a great teacher on the inside. Just I haven't had the confidence to let it out and this year I feel like I've really nailed it consistently going to nail it all right by the way Dylan Jones awesome catch today Odell Beckham style football practice tonight nailed it remind me of that because nailed it is one of his favorite shows at any rate tonight we're gonna be talking about hmm is it going to be hmm yeah Let's talk about flipping. I use the word flip quite a flipping lot. So, Flipping Our Lids is going to be the name of the book, all right? I might have a subtitle to the title. But at any rate, um, the flipped classroom, flipping it on its head, okay? Or maybe flipping it on its self-important head. I don't know. Is that too judgmental? Too judgy, if you will. At any rate, let's talk about the flipped classroom. Um, I heard about it in brief from a fellow teacher, a colleague of mine, uh, my next door neighbor, and he was talking about the flipped classroom and uh, talked about it, basically a one to two sentence summarization of it, and um, 
his opinions on it, and I just, it got me to go, hmm, maybe I should look it up. And I looked up the flipped classroom, and I get it. I get why it's so catchy and successful. The same reason why the growth mindset is so catchy and successful. It's got that little niche in it. It's got that little something to draw your attention because it's different, just for the sake of being different, just to get your attention. Like that's as it's like that's its sole purpose to get your attention, and that's okay. That's one line of a book. That's one line of an essay you've been trained to do, right? Uh, that's that's what we're doing for Ames writing. Ames writing's coming up, guys. Whatever you want to do, start off. You want an attention getter, right? You want a catchy title, a catchy beginning sentence to get them hooked in. That's essentially what the flipped classroom is. That's what essentially what the growth mindset is. Yeah, it's a lot more writing about it and research and blah, blah, blah. Not really empirical enough for me. But regardless, 90% of its success is solely because it's new and interestingly different and gets your attention. Huh, failure being successful? Hmm, looking at failure differently, huh? It's fascinating to the point of projectile vomiting because we, we get it, we get it. And it's been overdone and misdone. I know that's not a word, but we're doing it today. Uh, just like Barry Bodkin, I am inventing a word, misdone. Thank you, Shakespeare. At any rate, it has been misdone, overdone, just done. Just like the flipped classroom. What's the flipped classroom? Basically, a very, very crude representation, about as crude as the representation of a model of the city that um, Doc had on Back to the Future. I'm sorry about the crudity of this model. And it was obviously elaborate and everything and uh, to scale pretty much. And so that's about the summation of what it's going to be. The flip classroom. It's basically a hybrid of my ideas about doing homework in a different setting and then combining that with a Montessori thing, but kind of as a backdoor excuse to have the students do it on their own. We're putting all the work on the students. You want to make them think. I get it. You want them to work. But when it comes down to it, you need a little bit of rote memorization and direct instruction. And quite honestly, you need a lot of direct instruction. In math, in eighth grade, middle grade, middle school grades, you need a lot of direct instruction. Okay, however you feel about education. Oh, they should be doing this and that, and they should be exploring, talking with one another. When have you ever seen it actually work and if you can guarantee 100% or even 80% of the students working are on task working, doing what they're doing when they work in group work. You are responsible for what you do in the workplace as an adult. You need to learn to work individually as well. I'm not saying there's not a time for group work. There is. There really is. But I don't want that to be the thing. But we're not talking about group work today. Why do I have such a great idea for my next chapter that I've already kind of written when I'm talking about this? Hmm? I've already talked about it, but it makes me want to make another video of what I've already written about group work. I could write all day. You guys know that. Distractions, check. All right, so the flipped classroom. You're having the students go home with the content before teaching it in the classroom. And I want to say there isn't much teaching in the classroom going on. Not a lot of direct instruction in the flipped classroom. Very limited. And how it's supposed to work is the kids go home and research the, con okay, like the teacher says, okay, tomorrow, guys, we're going to work on uh, chapter 9, section 1, as geometric sequences. I want you guys to front load that tonight. I want you to read the chapter, take a look at the problems. You know homework's coming. I won't tell you which problems yet, so don't jump ahead of me. I'm going to pick 20 out of them, and don't just start doing all of them. Just front load it, and then tomorrow... You guys will work on your homework in class, and as you come up with pro and as you stumble upon problems, I'll be here to help you with those problems. And on its face, it sounds like a great idea. It really does. I'm like, huh, that's progressive. That's really good. However, that is contingent upon many things happening that just don't happen with most of our students. The majority of our students out there, even in the well-to-do areas. Can you guarantee that a student's gonna successfully read, understand, comprehend the content in that textbook and be ready to go with the homework for the next day? And you're gonna help them with that homework in class, not at home. Um, I get doing it in a different setting and learning it in a different setting, 
But having it completely flipped like that, how much teaching is the teacher really doing? And I get you're putting a lot of it on the students, and the students are going to have to learn things on their own anyways. Yeah, but how many of these students are you doing a disservice by not introducing that lesson to them? By not taking that lesson and tying it into the real life situation you can come up with? Like, you know, let's say in the military, con controlled avalanche. You need to launch something about the size and weight of a dog food bag. You know, parabola s, negative 16 squared, negative 16x squared plus 4x minus 12 or whatever it is. Actually, plus b, plus some, um, plus 10 or whatever wherever you're launching from, and you need to hit a mountain at a specific spot on that slope. You have very little room for error, and that's solving a system of uh, equations, one linear, one nonlinear, one quadratic. So, like, yeah, there's a, you wanna, the teacher can tie in those things with his or her real life experience. We've actually done this and had to do the calculations, and we've had to launch this bag on a specific place to control, to have the avalanche come down, not too much as to, you know, wipe out the whole village, just enough to alleviate the pressure, just the same way as a controlled uh, fire would be to prevent forest fires. Okay, that's how the controlled avalanche is, just to let a little, a little off the top, buddy, it's actually a little off the bottom. The same kind of concept. I get it, the flipped classroom. Uh, you want to have the kids work on it at home, but they will not do it for whatever reason. Whether the parents are on board or not, the parents are going to feel like, oh, no matter how many letters you send home to them, no matter how many meetings or curriculum nights you're going to have explaining the flipped classroom, they're going to flip their lids. They're like, wait a minute, we have to teach the concept and introduce it to them, and then they do the homework in the class and you help them if they need help? So you made the parents the teacher and the teacher the parents? It's not a flipped classroom, it's flipped responsibilities. You get paid to teach my child, you better teach that child. You better introduce the concept passionately and find some real life situations when they're gonna use it. That's your job, you are literally the teacher. You must teach. And yeah, I know it wasn't invented as a cop out for teachers, and it sounds on its face progressive and interesting and ooh. And I, I, don't, I see it being a cool idea once per chapter, once per chapter. One out of every 10 lessons. Okay, front load this. Go home and do this, and then come back with what problems you think you might have. I've done it before with my camera ready. I'm like, look, here's the camera ready we're gonna be working on. Uh, your homework tonight is to read it. You don't have to work on it because I'm not gonna ask you to do something at home that I haven't properly prepared you for, but you're gonna look at it, and then we're gonna talk about what your problems with it was tomorrow morning. The kids are gonna say, oh, psh, I don't have to literally do anything and prove that I did anything. I'll just wing it, and if he asks me or calls on me, he's gonna, I'm going to say, I didn't really get it. And then I'm, But you know I'm going to probe you and say, well, what didn't you get about it? What particular part? Like, where was the disconnect? And I know that's the question everyone hates to be asked. It's like, how do, am I supposed to answer why I don't understand it when I don't even have the understanding to understand it, let alone understand how I don't understand it? See what I'm saying? That's why kids hate that question. That's why I won't ask it to them. That's why I'm not going to do a flipped classroom. Because it's just flip logic, flip responsibilities. I teach. I'm a teacher. Yeah, I would love the parents to help and introduce this concept, but I would feel like I'm doing America a disservice. Do I have a flag to represent said disservice? Yes. All right. I'm one, two, three. America. Yes. It is my job to teach you, children. Literally, this is what I'm going to do. I will teach you because I love you guys and I love my job. Okay, and I love my country. Nothing, nothing, nothing will ever stop that. You guys are amazing. Don't ever forget that. Um, the flipped classroom is flipped responsibility, okay? It is the teacher's job to teach. I want to introduce the parents to the concepts. Of course I do. That's why I'm making these videos to send out, not just because I want to prove that I can write a book, whatever. I really want to get into everyone's head what is in my head. I want to share what's in there, and then that way if you want to understand it and see it, you can re watch it over and over again, you know, and just dig out whatever you want and take it from it. Anyways, uh, that's my thoughts on the Flip Classroom, guys. Next video is going to be probably on, but it's doing math, Mr. Jones. Hmm, are you? Bye-bye, guys.